Hi there, Coach Steve Candy of SageRunning.com here with another training talk. It was a beautiful day. Today we're going to talk about my top three tips or reasons why you would get into speed training even as a distance runner, even if you're running uh, something as long as a marathon or ultra marathon, uh, speed becomes more important. So we get down into events like the 5K, but those are all distance events. And before I get into these top three tips, the first thing I wanna say, and again, check out my previous playlist on this, is that you wanna build up your aerobic base or easy pace mileage and higher progressive weekly mileage uh, in terms of miles per week that you're running or kilometers per week, you want to kind of do that first usually uh, in each new training cycle. But also if you're just starting out as a runner, you don't want to be starting doing wind sprints all the time right away. You don't need the, the hit training, the high intensity stuff. You want to do LSD, long, slow distance training. Uh, and, and of course, if you're starting out, you start off with maybe walk running combination and then you're running for 20 minutes at a time, 30 minutes at a time but that's easy conversational pace. You're able to run at a heart rate and a breathing rate where if you were talking to someone, uh, you could easily say your words without totally huffing and puffing and hunching over. If you're doing that, you're probably running too fast too early and you're not gonna be running with good form and you could get in shape really fast, but you also could get injured and it's just not building good habits. Whereas you build that aerobic base first, then we look in to adding in uh, speed injections, so to speak, not needle injections, but like adding in workouts that we call quality workouts. So maybe it means going to the track once a week and doing 400 meter repeats or doing hill sprints, or even if you're a marathon distance runner, longer distance runner, maybe you're doing repetition types of workouts, uh, repeats, uh, interval training, there's different terms being thrown around here, but kilometer repeats or thousand meter repeats on the track, 800 meter repeats, stuff like that. Uh, even something like a 20 minute tempo run or 20 minute steady state we could say is getting into more speedier training. It's not conversational pace anymore. And so the top three reasons to get into this, number one, number one is at the skeletal muscular level, skeletal muscular level, uh, you're building that muscle power. When you have to run fast, and we're talking about like, you know, not sprinting always, but faster than 5K race pace. When you have to run fast uh, for little short periods of time, you, you're running at a high intensity. And that means your stride length is probably a lot longer. And your stride rate or how many steps you take in a minute is probably also quite a bit faster. Uh, if you're jogging around easy at conversational pace, maybe your stride rate or cadence is only 160 or 170 steps per minute. But when you start doing speed training, especially if you're doing like a fast stride for 200 meters, uh, you're probably getting up closer to 200 steps per minute. If you're doing a full out sprint, you're probably over 200 steps a minute. But let's say you're doing a longer speed interval session of kilometer repeats or thousand meter repeats, you're probably still at least around 170, 180 steps per minute. And that's really good usually for your efficiency. And we'll get into that in a second here. But you're running with a longer stride, that means you're, you're using more muscle power. You're really working on that push-off force, that hip extension, that stride extension of lengthening your stride, a little bit more of powerful arm swing, right? Uh, developing the core muscles as well, engaging the glutes, more hip extension. So it builds really good form. When you have to run fast, especially if you think of yourself like running fast for 200 meters, you could probably run a lot of you might be able to run Kipchoge's marathon pace, sub two hour marathon pace for 200 meters. It's about 33 seconds. It's actually pretty fast, but uh, maybe some of you young whippersnappers in high school could definitely sprint that fast. Uh, you have to run with good form when you're sprinting, basically. So the speed training in, in essence, basically, irons out some of those inefficiencies in your form, right? You kind of have to have a pretty efficient arm swing to run fast, to sprint fast. You can't be all over the place too much, right? And your legs have to be going pretty powerful at a pretty good stride rate and a pretty long stride to run fast as well. Um, so it irons out some form inefficiencies. It teaches you good form and it kind of prepares the body 
to make slower running paces feel more comfortable. So if you're doing 400 meter repeats or kilometer repeats at faster than your 5K race pace, all of a sudden 10K pace or your half marathon pace or your marathon pace feels a little bit more comfortable. It feels more like a jog maybe because uh, your leg muscles are used to th that high intensity sprinting, so to speak. And if we look at this uh, in terms of, yeah, relative speed, basically, uh, your body gets used to running faster, even if it's just for short periods of time, even if you're just doing a workout like six to eight times 400 meter repeats, uh, if you're doing that a lot faster than your other, your race pace, then race pace will hopefully feel more comfortable. And you're taking rest because you want to run with good form. So it develops the leg muscle power, the tendon strength, the, the, you're getting used to that intensity, that impact force, and you're able to translate that into moving more efficiently at the neuromuscular level. We're talking about the brain to muscle connection. Uh, you develop better motor patterns, basically. So that's my number one tip. Number two reason, the number two reason to get into speed training or high intensity training uh, is the cardiovascular benefits. So now we're talking about the heart, the heart as a muscle, uh, but also then your lungs delivering oxygen to your muscles, uh, which will are screaming for oxygenated blood when you have to run at a high intensity. So if you started sprinting around a track at your 1500 meter race pace, mile race pace or faster, or basically almost all out, right? 90, 95% top speed, you're probably gonna be going pretty well through 200 meters, but you get about to 300 meters, you get like 40 seconds, 50 seconds in, and you start going a little anaerobic, is what we say. There's a, enough of a energy shift. The energy system has to shift because your heart's starting to pump. You're breathing really, really hard. Uh, it's really high intensity compared to conversational pace, right? And because of that energy shift, the anaerobic energy contribution will say, you basically have a lot of lactate building up in your bloodstream. And uh, it's kind of a shock to the system if you're not used to it. Sprinters and people that do weightlifting a lot are used to this burn, this muscle burn, right? This high intensity anaerobic nature. But if you have only been doing distance running stuff at low intensity, then maybe you're not kind of used to it. So it's good to kind of get used to those higher lactate levels in the blood. And that kind of muscle or that anaerobic energy contribution uh, that your body has to start saying, hey, we need to get efficient at this. And so what this training does is it triggers your heart and lungs and uh, other aerobic enzymes basically to get more efficient at processing that lactate, uh, buffering lactic acid, which uh, will happen with anaerobic energy contribution. And I won't get too sciencey here, um, but you know, stimulating the body to say, we need to move blood around oxygenated blood to our working muscles more efficiently, faster. And that's what happens with building uh, capillary beds uh, is basically just getting the blood to the muscles faster and your body adapts to it. Your body adapts to it because it has this new stimulus, this high intensity speed training stimulus where your heart rate starts spiking up over 80, 85, 90%, maybe even close to 100% maximum heart rate in terms of VO2 max training. Uh, your heart's used to pumping more blood at a higher stroke volume uh, and hitting really high beats per minute, getting close to your 100% maximum heart rate. So your heart gets stronger. Your heart gets stronger. You get a hypertrophy of the left ventricle, basically, uh, in some cases. But it's, it, as a muscle, it, it starts adapting. And your lungs, your lungs get more efficient as well. Instead of huffing and puffing right away, maybe you're able to tolerate uh, more of that fast running for 300 meters, 400 meters, uh, and then all of a sudden, your 5K race pace comes down. And eventually, and this is what we've seen with some stage running athletes, uh, people that have started off maybe as beginners running 5K races, eventually in a couple years uh, with balanced aerobic training and the speed work and higher mileage usually, they're able to run maybe a full marathon, 42K or 26.2 miles at their previous 5K race pace. What they could only run for a 5K three years ago that pace per kilometer or per mile is something now that they could run for a full marathon. Uh, and that's kind of the, the development you get with uh, getting more efficient, basically. And it affects what we call your running economy or your efficiency as a runner uh, because it's related to 
basically how much oxygen, how quickly you get that work oxygen to your working muscles. And the speed training really helps with that. Now, my third point, my third and final point uh, in this video of why you should do speed training, high intensity training, and it's sprinkled in uh, to a well-rounded training plan, like at our sagerunning.com training plans, 5K to marathon, any service, any distance, uh, ultra marathon as well. We want to basically make it so that longer paces or slower paces that we have to run over longer distances feel more comfortable. And the third point, the third point is that it also helps your metabolism. It helps boost your metabolism, much like if you have a well-balanced training plan where uh, you're doing some weight training, right? You're not just doing, uh, you know, super light weights and really high reps always with weight training. Sometimes you do, uh, you know, only five or six reps. I'm thinking of like a deadlift or uh, doing pull-ups even. It's pretty high intensity, right? Like, most people probably can't do uh, a ton of reps and pull-ups, and maybe you're doing several sets of, of reps. Uh, but like weight training, like weight training, uh, sprinting up a hill or doing hill sprints or 200-meter, 400-meter high-intensity workouts on the track, uh, it's kind of a, a shock to the system, like I said, and it boosts your metabolism. So uh, it could actually help you burn more calories uh, throughout the course of a day because your body's kind of in shock. It's get, it's kind of like muscle confusion. It doesn't know what you're doing. Uh, and that's a good thing. That could be a good thing. You're a more well-rounded athlete. You're a more well-rounded runner. Uh, and the ease of movement, having that strength, is could help you in a lot of different ways uh, as a distance runner, as a well-rounded athlete. And just uh, you know, getting that core strength, getting that high-intensity training in, boosting the muscle power, so to speak, as a runner, uh, is really beneficial. And if you're burning more calories uh, while between runs or between workouts, it's a good stimulus. Whereas if you just always went out and ran super slow all the time, uh, you might not get as fit, basically. Uh, and, you know, personal story before I close this video out, I got really fit running slightly lower mileage, but doing more intensity when I was doing road half marathon training. Uh, this was back when I ran on the roads 100% of the time. And I ran my personal best, 104.32 in the half marathon off of 90 miles a week about. And I remember just, I could eat a ton of food, a ton of junk food. Uh, and I, I would be like losing weight because the intensity was there. We were doing a lot of like kilometer repeats on the track. Also like two mile repeats faster than tempo pace. So 85, 90% max heart rate type of workouts. And it was lower mileage. It wasn't the 140 miles a week I ran during marathon training, uh, but it was higher intensity in there. And a final note on that, that is a bit of an injury risk. It can be an injury risk, especially if you have bad form or you're getting too tired and sloppy with your form or, you know, for a lot of reasons, the higher impact force, you have to be careful with it. So you have to introduce it gradually. And that's why I say build the aerobic base first before you get into sprinkling and speed training. And you really don't need that much, right? You only need 10, 15, 20, maybe 25% of your weekly mileage or weekly volume is this actual high intensity speed types of workouts uh, because you're not gonna be doing a bunch of sprints all the time every day. That would be not a good idea for a, a distance runner. If you're a sprinter or another athlete in another type of sport, that might be okay. Uh, but it also depends on some genetic factors and your training history and injury history as well. So be safe out there. Stay healthy. Thanks so much for subscribing on here. Again, prize giveaways at 200,000 subscribers. It looks like it's probably going to happen after the holidays. So uh, I know shipping stuff out is going to be really slow right now, especially with the COVID era. So be patient on that. But I do have some big prizes for you guys. And I'll be running uh, a thing probably where people upvote comments on a special video for the 200,000 subscriber giveaway on this channel. I can't thank you enough. It's been an incredible journey of over a decade making running related content on here on the YouTube. Again, check out the coaching website, training plan website that Coach Sandy and I uh, have plans that you could download and buy. Good gift, last minute gift for a loved one maybe. Sagerunning.com, uh, the new all-in plans are great uh, all-around plans that you could check out. That's a business plug. Thanks to title sponsor Hoka Oneone for keeping the dream alive. And thank you to the Patreon supporters for really making this channel possible. Like and subscribe uh, on here. Hope you're doing well and stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions.